and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the World Championship Series. We're here for Group C of WCS Europe Challenger. I'm Nathaniel, joined by Katz. Katz, good to it's good to be here. It's good too. With yeah, you. it is, Nate. Yeah. It's been it's been too long. It's been it's been way too long. Uh, we've got we've got ZVZs coming up. I so love ZVZs. I just want to say in advance, thank you, Katz, for being here for having <laughs> my back. So that uh, I don't have to sit here and try to talk about things I don't understand because ZVZ is just, it's on another level. You know, you need to ascend to a higher plane to really get full <laughs> grasp on that matchup. Listen, ZVZ is one of my favorite matchups to watch. I feel like the matchup has somewhat of a stigma. People are like, oh, ZVZ. I'm like, dude, I fuck. Oh, I fr freaking love ZVZ. Yeah. Um, and that is simply because I feel like the uh, StarCraft is a, is a game that's played on three fronts. Um, the way I see it, at least. It's economy, tech, and army, right? And in CVC, I think it's always just so glaring to see what advantages are being taken and how the players exploit those advantages. Yeah. They feel a lot more punishing than the other matchups because uh, at least the way it feels like when you try to defend in ZVZ, it's like if you're behind and you're trying to do anything, like if your your opponent can just punish you so easily. Our next matchup is Starbuck versus Bly. We are loading into this one right now to kick things off. This is our elimination match. The loser of this best of three is out and the winner gets another chance. But we were talking earlier, Cats. Starbuck is the underdog of this group. Absolutely. I really like the way that he played against Cyril. He played like he was the underdog. He took risks. Um, well, let's get to introduce them. Yeah. Uh, that, I mean, he is our underdog in the Northwest. We're starting things off on Backwater. He is Starbuck. And he is an overdog at the bottom right-hand side. It's Mr. Bly. Overdog, you wouldn't call him like the, the crowd favorite or... I like Overdog. Overdog? Yeah. I've not heard that one before. <laughs> now you have. Yeah. But yeah, I really like the way that Starbuck was playing against Serral. So in game one, one thing he did and one thing that uh, you were talking about in terms of CVC being punishing was he basically said, you're the better player, I'm going to go gasless. And in going gasless, what you do is you shut yourself into, into those two bases, right? So you concede map control, you get a little bit of an advantage just economically by going gasless in itself because you're not mining the gas, right? So those are extra drones mining minerals. Um, and that makes it so that you don't have to go through the action trade that is Link Bane. And we actually see Bly here going gasless himself. Mm -hmm. This is one of the best maps to go gasless on Nate. I assume it's because of the third base being protected by your wall at the natural? Absolutely, yeah. So there's one single choke leading into all three bases, which means you can just condense your defense on that natural. And, it, and maybe with just one crit tumor, it's particularly easy to block um, with just a couple of Evo chambers and a roach warrant provided that you can do it um, early enough. So I really like this approach by Bly. Meanwhile, Starbuck is getting the link speed. And if this doesn't pay off, then, you know, Bly is going to have a significant edge as far as economy goes. Usually the drawback from going something like Gasless is what we saw from Starbuck. You talked, you touched on it in his game against Serral, which was that Serral got his third earlier, right? Because he gets that map control with the link speed. In this case, that's not going to be the case. Bly actually already got his third going. Yeah. And I mean, as long as he holds whatever the first initial pressure is, he shouldn't have to worry too much about the speed punishing him since, as you already pointed out, this map chokes oh. very nicely, but the spine crawler is going to get canceled. And, and by the time he saw. Ling's already get across the map, he's already got a few of his own. Yeah. I'm not sure what he saw that made him cancel that spine or start that spine in the first place. But uh, yeah, we see even links here. And Bly is chasing out Starbuck, which is a bad idea if you are going gasless for the most part, because when the speed kicks in, Starbuck can choose to take those engagements uh, whenever he wants, right? So that's the disadvantage. It's not like links without speed are weaker than links with speed. It's the fact that the links with speed can choose to take the engagements that they can win and avoid the ones that they will lose. And yep. here it, we're going to see exactly that, unless Starbuck decides otherwise. And he's going to say, you know what? You're trying to lead me away from your base. This is my opening. I mean, he's going to run over from oh. there. He's wrenched into Cats. The wall is on the way. Evolution Chamber is being produced. Now the lanes are going to bust down the bottom one. And Starbuck is actually going to make his way inside of Bly's base. We see the lanes, as you talked about, not having speed. They cannot choose to force this engagement. So we have the surround on the Queen inside the main mineral line. Not going to focus it down. 
and Starbuck is going to run back over towards the natural and try to grab a queen, maybe some drones. Man, that was a brilliant move by Starbuck. Just very well thought out. He basically said, you're trying to lead me away from your base, so I'm not going to, you know, I could take this circlings for free. Instead, I'm going to try to abuse whatever it is that you're trying to um, to make happen to for, in, in terms of defense, right? So just really well done. It's uh, ultimately not going to pan out for him all that well, but it does a little bit of damage, and the decision was, you know, it was nice. It's the kind of risk that, that you want to take if you feel like the underdog. Yeah, and he sees that this third base is starting very late for Starbucks. So, I mean, Bly doesn't have a crazy amount of saturation on those bases. He did lose a few drones, but is it, you know, the, the, having that third base early, I guess the larva it makes up for it, right? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, also he went gas, so oh, he's going to have, he's going to, well, he should have had an economic lead, actually, but he's behind in drones. Uh, and that might just be a product of making this wall off so early. I think he might have anticipated a little bit more circlings from Starbuck. Starbuck didn't really commit to the circlings almost at all. So he's in a fine position. And I say he's playing like the uh, like the underdog, but not so much as he was with Serral, right? This time he went for the speed. He was ready to say, Bly, you know what? You want to play Ling Bane against me? Let's do it. Against Serral, he was like, I'm just going to turtle here, you know? I'm not going to I'm not gonna try to trade actions with you. And even in the second game against Serral, when he, when he went for the Mutas, I loved that. Um, but Serral was too good at scouting. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty often that we see like a lot of those games where someone goes for Mutalisks. It's just, can I kill the Roach attack before I take mm -hmm. too much damage? Even though they can't shoot the Mutas, the Mutas, well, they don't deal a crazy amount of damage to those Roaches, as we know that they're pretty tanky. Yeah, exactly. And we might see something like that uh, from Bly or Starbuck, I mean. Yeah, they're, they're both the type of player that would be willing to do something like it. Uh, the problem was in that particular game that Serral identified it so early. He saw the lure early enough that he was like, okay, this can only be Muta. And he prepared an attack, had the link follow up. It was just, it was just too good. Yeah, this is an interesting setup though. I mean, this lair feels like it's coming in really late from Bly. Like Roach speed and plus one are already pretty close to finishing up for Starbuck. Do you think he goes for an attack with this? Or like, what's what's Bly's play if it's just going, he's just being so late on the lair tech? Yeah, Bly has had to catch up in workers and now he's ahead. So he has that economic lead, but it's not a big one. I think that I like Starbuck position a little bit better. I'm not so sure that he will go for a timing. It's a difficult uh, map to hit a timing on, but maybe you can take a fourth if you have map control, if you feel like you have uh, more units than your opponent. And we do have a few roaches coming out. Now, interestingly, Bly is going to start cranking out a huge amount of roaches. Mm -hmm. Without speed, I feel like he can't really move on the map too easily. Is that a second roach warrant? What? I guess we're going to see roach speed and maybe, I guess, Tunnel Claws. That's the only thing you would do with it, right? Yeah. Or but he's the, worried about losing the front one? Oh, that might just be it, actually. Yeah, I think he's anticipating losing the... What a great move by Bly, actually. He's anticipating losing this roach warrant. But at the same time, he made a lot of roaches. Oh, I liked killing the Evo Chamber there. It was going through out, out that choke could have been really dangerous if Starbuck chose to stand his ground and if he had maybe a couple of more, ro more roaches. But yeah, Bly will end up not losing that roach warrant. So we'll see if he cancels the second one now that he has position outside of his base. Yeah. That is one of the that's that's one of the bad things about walling off and going gasless, right? It's that you create that choke for yourself. Uh, to get out of. I mean, we've seen quite a few players, even in Challenger, lock in their late game units. So we've seen them trying to get units like Ultralisks out. Snipe on the Queen, not bad before that Spine is able to root, but keeps the Roach Warren alive so far. He does have the backup Roach Warren in the main base, just in case. Mm -hmm. And Starbuck, you can see that he didn't actually wall off, and, it, and it's exactly for that reason, right? He had the map control, uh, whereas Blight needed the wall off for defense. So. Just throwing it out there because, you know, people might think it's always good to wall off. That's, you know, not the case. Yeah, especially if they had more Ravagers and you really have to worry about those Biles mm -hmm. knocking things down. We do have Tunneling Claws actually being researched by Starbucks, so Bly <laughs> not making his move towards that. So this is one of those great harassment tools. We've seen it time and time again. Roaches with their regeneration while they're burrowed are very difficult to take down. And it gives Zerg really good harass without having to use things like drops and whatnot to get through. Or at the worst case, just reposition your army. Absolutely. Now they're both going for Tunneling Claws. It's not my favorite map to do it on because of the same reasons why Gasless is good, right? You're going to have to go in to all three bases through that choke. But uh, the fourth base ev eventually will open up a possibility where you can split in two different ways. Still, it's not three or four different ways like it would be on other maps. Um, you know, and that's when, when the when the burrow is most dangerous. Yeah, we do have him poking down the ramp, Starbuck. He has that one upgrade advantage with the plus one carapace. And with that plus two coming in, I mean, trying to take a poke here and there. Mm -hmm. 
especially in this choke point. Now he can heal his roaches very quickly since tunneling claws is done too. Yeah, absolutely. And both players positioning and posturing around this choke Ooh. point. And Starbuck is kind of just going to say, you know what, I'm going for the fight right now. He's not looking to uh, sneak past Bly. He's just looking for the fight. But he now will find Bly has a lot of units. The Ravagers are actually repositioned by Bly, and that was a great move by him. Yep, having those Biles available, even smacking those Broad Roaches was really nice. Plus two attack is just kicking in right now for Starbuck, though. Oh, He's the Roaches are so low from Bly. Again. But you said it, Bly somehow manages with all of his Roaches. They're so low on health, and now his Burrow is done. He has Tunneling Claws. He's going to get right back on the other side. Yeah, Starbuck decided to go for a kill move there, and, you know, Bly had a lot. At that point, you have to decide, do I just back away or maybe aim for the Ravagers? But Bly managed to reposition the Ravagers in the midst of all that, and that was a brilliant move by him because in keeping them alive, you have the extra range, the Biles, um, and the extra damage, right? Whereas if they're in the front, they die much more quicker than Roaches. Um, so even though it was just like four Ravagers or something like that, it makes a big difference. Yeah, having that bio AOE on the clumped roaches is really nice. And as you pointed out, Ravagers have less health than uh, the roaches. They die a lot faster in those head-to-head -head fights. So Bly spreads himself across Starbucks' base. He's utilizing that burrow very well. We've had tons of drones go down, and this is where Bly is able to really get aggressive. The main base is not mining. The natural is under fire. There are still roaches by the third. Drones are dying in droves. Yeah, and this was particularly nasty because all of those roaches were like one hit away from dying. Like each one of them was in the red. Um, but, you know, one unit, maybe two, maybe the other unit is the mutilus, but the roach just burrowing has such a good regeneration that, that that kind of engagement is just so hurtful because it seems like you could have easily won it if you were Starbuck. If you had one extra, sh one extra volley from enough roaches, you could have cleaned off most of that army. Uh, but it not being the case just means that they're going to have brand new units in, in just a few seconds. Yep. And then talk about that army being finally slowed down a little bit. Here's another one. In the fourth base, 48 drones have died. And Bly just, after the way this game started, was a little bit slow, a little bit bumpy here and there. But just runs away with it after you said it. Starbuck goes for the kill move and he just, he failed. And now he has really nothing past this. He can try to clean this up, but... What, realistically, what does he do even if he kills this army? Bly's just going to have another one ready as soon as he's done. Yeah, he's got to be thinking about the next game, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, he lists 58 drones. So we could do the castle thing where we're like, I mean, I guess maybe he could like. So know. like the the, <laughs> I'm just gonna do the caster thing here for a second. If if I'm Starbuck and I this is my last game in the world and you know I have to win it somehow, I just kind of hope that maybe Bly never attacks and get maxed. So. You know, if you get maxed and, and you have nine workers, <laughs> <laughs> then your army's going to be pretty big. GG, Bly takes the first game. I mean, dear, I mean, you know what? If he was able to max. If he was able to max I mean, with nine workers. That's true. If, he, if only he had... Then uh, his army would have been huge. I mean, if he had just built like 10 Banshees there, really, that also oh, yeah. would have had a huge impact on that fight. But Bly just, I mean... He comes into this group, I think a lot of people, he's got a lot more history, a lot more experience in the big stage than a guy like Starbuck. I didn't I didn't dislike the position, though. I mean, Starbuck had the tools really early, had the burrow move faster. He had his roach speed and his plus one much, much faster. And even during the fight, he still had the upgrade advantage. But what, what really stood out for you as, like, what allowed Bly to do that? Was it getting that drone count up ahead a little bit when they were both saturated on three bases? You know what? I was actually very surprised by the fact that Starbuck managed to get ahead in the economic game, just by virtue of making those 10 links, forcing the wall off by Bly, uh, running by, right? These were all great moves that actually put Starbuck in, a, in an economic lead, whereas that's the strength of Gasless. So Bly was a little bit behind on all fronts, not not you know not a huge disadvantage on all fronts. I think that the, the, the big problem for Starbuck was that he saw his timing and he went for it regardless of the amount of army that Bly had. If he had just sat back and kind of maintained that um, same game, maybe getting maxed, I think we would see uh, potentially right. different outcomes. His plus two attack did finish during the fight, so maybe mm -hmm. that's another factor that would have been that's an excellent a lot point. if yeah. he had it throughout the entirety of it. But that yeah. map also, things get tricky. They're fighting in the trenches in that, that low ground area in the middle. Yeah, upgrades can be really deceitful. Like, you look at it and you're like, okay, it's about to finish, but don't go until Kerrigan tells you to go. Yeah. Well, I think I think Bly had the Abathur one on. I think when you, when you spectate yeah. them, you can hear which ones. I was like, all right, Blaz, Blaz got the Abathur going nice, on. Nice, nice. Nice, nice. Do you so you, you wait for Abathur. No, I use Alarak. Alarak? Yeah. For Zerg? Oh, yeah. He's the best, dude. He just, yeah, he talks uh, a lot uh, of crap. Yeah. Alarak's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. It's like, 
Yeah. Make more of those overlords. Disgusting creatures. I'm like, chill, dude. Next map, Neon Violet Square. Ooh. We are counting down to get into it. Good I time. love countdowns. Good time. They remind me of uh, New Year's. <laughs> New Year's is great. It's great times. Great times. I can't wait for next one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what else? Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see how this one plays out. I feel like this is another like kind of defensive map. You don't mm -hmm. have the same choke point, but it's Starbuck versus Bly. We're going into game two. And uh, oh boy, good times, good times. In the top left, we have the Blue Zerg player. He's down a map. He is Starbuck. And he has made $16,000 in earnings. Who would have guessed? Yeah, he plays a lot in the online stuff. Like, yeah. He's a guy you've seen around forever, but just not the big tournaments. Yeah. And at the bottom right hand side, it's going to be Bly. Also plays damn near pretty much everything there is. Oh, yeah. Bly is definitely, yeah. Bly, tournament Bly, to, Bly reminds me, you think back, he's like a, a legacy from the era of the mass online tournaments where all the Koreans would play every single day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you'd be like, oh, Hyun made like $50,000 this year. It's like, did he win a tournament? It's like, no, mm -hmm. he just won every, he won a thousand <laughs> play him dailies. Yep. Like, that's that's what happened. Yeah. And Bly is, Bly is one of those guys that he just does ne not miss anything, like any tournament. Like, oh, random yep. tournament. Cham is another one. Cham yeah. and Bly. Yeah. They play in everything. Is there a random tournament for 10 bucks going on at 3 in the morning? Bly's playing it. Bly's probably going to win it, too. <laughs> yep. Uh, so we see we see Starbuck now going for the gasless opener, or at least a, a later gas. Oh, both players, actually. And yeah. this is really interesting because, like you said, it's not exactly the same choke. There's going to be rocks on the other side of uh, of the choke, but it's it's still an extra entrance. Uh, now you can block, off, block that off with a couple of queens, potentially, uh, or after blocking the front with maybe three buildings you can put just one queen the disadvantage here compared to the other map even if you were to block uh, yourself in is that the third base doesn't have you know the third base that's inside your base doesn't actually have that many uh, minerals so it's very likely or i would love to see at least one of these players go for muta after they identify that their opponent is also going gasless and they inevitably will so if you go muta you will have access to all the gas you need you don't need that many resources as far as minerals are concerned. Um, yeah. And I mean, it kind of, it's kind of perfect against gasless. Because the base, just to clarify, the base has less minerals, but it has the same amount of gas mm -hmm. as any normal base. So uh, definitely makes this map fun for people who like to play mech and other matchups. Oh, okay. yeah. If you need gas, this is a good map. You have a little bit of less minerals, but it's so easy to defend it. So what's the, I, I guess not, not, nothing, neither player has really identified it yet, just yet, have they? No, not yet. Bly is going to give away some hints uh, based on how he moves with his links. And Starbuck, they're both going for scouting, right? Like, But Bly is going to move uh, into Starbuck and eventually he's not going to continue to move in, which will give away that he doesn't have gasless. Or if he looks for trades, um, you know, unfavorable trades, then that'll also give it away. This queen is postured really far up there. Yeah, actually gets caught on the ramp, surrounded by Bly. Oh, man. Lane, and he is just going to pick that one off. No problemo. No problemo, indeed. I mean, the idea is there for Starbuck, right? It's the queen tanks for the links, but that's not enough links. So he needed either his second queen there, at least the links a little bit closer to the queen or right behind the queen, or just not to take that fight yet. I mean, he and saw the links coming. That link gets a drone on oh, pocket base. This is nasty. Oh. Not bad. Meanwhile, those two lings that Starbuck had get uh, wrecked by the queens here. Yeah, can we check the vision of Starbuck uh, and Blight? Are they aware of uh, gases that they scouted? So not really, no. No. Not really on either front, but both players should speed, have an idea. If he opened speed, would he have taken the pocket base? Can Bly at least say that? Yeah, I, I mean... If you open speed, it's a lot more feasible to take the other outside base. So that's a good point. Now he sees three queens, he sees the extra creep tumor, and he sees the wall off. That should be um, his tell. But both players are actually going for a Roach Warren. The reason I love going Mutalisks off of Gasless, especially when you're up against Gasless, is that normally uh, the disadvantage of going Muta is that you're taking up and you have to sacrifice on other regards such as army or economy right we saw this in the game of uh, of starbuck versus Cyril where we, where he was kind of trying to do both kind of like try to take a third uh, i love that he like attacked with some links and bailings to distract Cyril or try to delay his attack so he committed a little bit to army 
and then he was committing to tech on top of that. And that's just a huge risk because if you get attacked, you get killed, right? Right. But with gasless, you can't really attack because you have slow links. So, you know, your opponent yeah. will see your slow links moving across the map. Well, I've got a lot it's of time. It's a terrible commitment. I've got yeah. a lot of time. I mean, yeah, exactly. And even and even even if you know, yeah, you have a lot of time to react, and it's just a terrible commitment to make from the gasless player. So then you just have free reign to go for two advantages. Say, forfeit completely army, forfeit completely defense, and go. Oh, I love it. Yeah. and go straight into tech and economy. So Bly will be the one making that decision, though it's not the fastest Muta ever. I still like it. How many Mutas do you reckon he needs the strategy like this? Is there a full commitment to Mutalists where you're building them nonstop, or is this just get out seven or eight harass and make your transition with the, the air control? Um, I think he's just going to make a Muta transition. So he's going to show Roaches first. He's going to maybe... Um, play to scare Starbuck a little bit and then switch onto Muta and, you know, have that be a surprise enough to turn the tides off a fight or something like that. Whereas Starbuck is more likely to lean on onto the Ravagers and now he's taking the gold, so he will be look, looking for an economic transition. Now, I do want to stress, when I was saying Muta, I meant like, skip link speed, go for a lair, don't make, you know, roach upgrades or anything like that. Just okay. go for the fastest Muta ever. This is a little bit different than what I was talking about. They both essentially went for roaches first. Uh, but I still like it a lot. Okay. The Overseer dips in, doesn't see the the big tech, of course, that we're talking mm -hmm. about here. But he goes, gets the deny on this expansion. Now the question becomes, Katz, can he actually defend this push that's coming his way before Mutas come out? Uh, it's going to be will pretty difficult. For, will he even go for Mutas with this? But not anymore. No, and I wasn't really expecting this attack for Starbuck because he's the one uh, taking his uh, gold base. So he must have seen something or just say, you know, oh, there's a wall up there. I guess I can clean up the Roach Warren. Yeah, I have to say, I mean, he, he could have gone straight for the Mutalisks, but I guess he didn't want to get into that weird trade situation since he feels comfortable in this matchup. Mm -hmm. And he defends pretty well. I mean, you lose the Roach Warren, but he has the Mutalisks available still, and he's going to use that Spire to crank them out behind this. Hasn't started another Roach Warren, though. Yeah, that said, Starbuck must have seen something because he switched onto Hydras very quickly. And let's not forget, he still has that gold base that will start reaping the benefits of um, just shortly. Yeah, do you think it's because he gave up the expansion so easily? Like, he just wasn't planning on making a bunch of ground units? That's very possible, yeah. yeah I don't know. Just a handful of links stopped he, it. He had to have seen something. Um, or maybe he just favors Hydras, but that's, you know, pretty yeah, I guess he, I guess he could just like them a lot. We do have a, mm -hmm. a good amount of Mutalisks being made. And, you know, the high, I guess the Hydralisks, you know, until you have the mobility and the range upgrade, in lower numbers, the Mutas can really mess those up too, but of course, now he knows 100% that they're here, pushing the Roaches away, and he wants to send his army to the north side to take out this gold at the same time. I Big really like Starbuck's position right now. I mean, he's going to lose a couple of Roaches to this, but he was ready with the Hydras. The Muta are not going to do anything for Bly. That's an expensive investment, right? It's like 400 resources or 450 resources just to drop the Spire. A lot of time committed, uh, lost the Roach, were in the process, but hey! Bly finds an opening. Oh no, the Hydras are exposed! Yeah, it gets a few of them on the left side. The Mutas are going to come in too, which means that the anti-air has been eliminated, so the Mutalisks can help pitch into this fight to help clean up the Roaches. And he still has that one Ravager alive. If he can keep that one alive, of course, that file is so nice to have for this army. Smacks into some of the Roaches, and that Muta count sitting pretty at 14. Oh my a single god. Hydra. Oh That's my it. god. Expect the unexpected when you're playing Bly. This guy just moved into the gold. He was like, you know what? I'm going to go in what you got. And he finds like, what, six, seven Hydras? That is so much DPS that he took. They are not, they are very squishy units. They are glass yep. cannons, essentially. They don't have the ability to move out. So those Hydras should be protected by the Roaches being in front um, from Starbucks. So just uh, very unfortunate he didn't, turn of events there. I, I mean, it seemed like he definitely had enough Hydras to deal with the Mutas if his Roaches could mm -hmm. engage Bly's Roaches. But yeah, I think and, and Bly actually committed to more Mutas, which was great for Starbuck because Mutas are not fighting units. So Bly was never going to be able to kill Starbuck so long as he didn't catch like seven Hydras for free, right? Yeah. And then Bly just great positioning, knows what to go for, goes for the rest of the Hydras with the Roaches, Mutas clean up. GG. Beautiful flank, beautiful flank. So we see beautiful. Bly will make his way to the decider match. He will play the loser of our next series. Starbuck, good effort, but he's been eliminated. And now it comes down to seeing whether Drogo or Cyril 
is going to come out on top of this group. That's going to be our next match, Cats. And it's going to be really good. I mean, Drogo played a great series against Bly, and he was telling me he was really preparing for this. Against Bly, he told me he might get mind-gamed. I think against against someone like Serral, he just probably plays straight up, or maybe he's the one looking for the mind games. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to this one. All right. Should be a good series. We're going to go to a break, ladies and gentlemen, when we return the winner's match of Group C here at the World Championship Series Europe Challenger. We'll be right back. <laughs> 